Peace and blessings to the 12 tribes of Israel. Today I'm going to deal with a topic called policing marriage. Policing marriage. Now, uh, it's mainly going to deal with if uh, you are supposed to share your bank accounts, your social media, your um, your messages, your private emails, text messages, etc., uh, etc., et with your spouse from the beginning, right? So, should your spouse have access to all of your logins, your passwords, so they can check up on you on a consistent basis? So that's really the question. Should you share your main bank account with your spouse? Now, in realistically speaking, it would be the man sharing his bank account with his wife, right? Because the man is the breadwinner and he is supposed to be providing for his family as the head of the household. So it would be his bank account that will be more, most likely to be shared with his wife, right? I.e. he puts in the lion's share of the money, if not all of the money, and she just basically uses it, right? So it would be the main bank account where his salary comes in, his business money comes in, his various businesses or anything that comes in would would be generally money that he's generated. Right now, the answer to that question is no, 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 no. In my humble opinion, and, and that is a, a, an opinion with with experience, the answer should always be no. Do not share your main bank account with your wife. Don't ever do that. Don't ever do that. And what these wicked Christian churches do is that they will say, oh, you was the man. Oh, she she needs to feel part of of she needs to she needs you mean you need to make her feel like she's your wife. So you need to think about sharing, putting her name on your house. So you've you've spent 10, 15, 20 years building a house or buying a house. Right. You've worked hard. And this woman just comes along. You've only known her for a year, year and a half. And the man in the church is telling you, or the woman in the in the church is telling you, oh, you need to put your house in your wife's name. The answer should always be no. Don't ever put your house in your wife's name. Don't ever do that. Don't ever do that. That's a Christian spirit. And that spirit is not biblical, right? That spirit is coming from feminism, liber women's liberation. That's where that spirit is coming from. And I'm not saying that every single woman is wicked, right? Because that's not true, right? Um, they are, I, I think most women, and when, when I say women, I'm talking about the daughters of Zion. So that would be the black woman, right? Um, I think most of our women are not marriage material. That's That's my personal opinion. And I think, uh, but I think there are good women out there. There are still good women out there that are very submissive and will submit and will be nice to you and kind to you and be a help meet and be a pillar of rest and all the stuff that she should be doing, right, as a woman. I think there are really good women out there. But unfortunately, the vast majority of our women in the Western world, in the first world countries, are not marriage material. And it's simply because they've been brought up on a diet of feminism, non-stop feminism, and not just the, you know, just a, 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 the weak, the weak form of feminism, but real toxic feminism, you know, ultra feminism, as I call it, right? <laughs> and it, it is a kind of sense of entitlement, like they are, they deserve to be respected, they deserve to be treated well, and they deserve to be treated like a queen, and the man has to worship. Uh, her because she is so special and she, and he should be very grateful that he's been blessed with a woman like her and all she brings is looks that's all she brings she brings looks probably brings a smile you know probably brings what's between her leg and that's all she brings you know but men who are really really ready for marriage god fearing man men good men decent men they're looking for more than that they're looking for a woman who primarily will submit because if the woman is not going to submit, you're not going to have a marriage. It doesn't matter how many of you women think that you can get in a marriage and do whatever you feel like doing. It's not going to last with that type of attitude. My wife talks to the men that women, A for women, is, we did the A to Z of our particular order. A for uh, women is attention. Women like attention. So you can't be in this game of marriage or relationship without learning the art 
of giving attention. Women thrive on attention. Everything a woman does for attention. See their hair, see their clothes, the color of their clothes, the shape of their clothes is one thing they are looking for. Is what? Attention. That's it. That's it. That's why they use bright colors, they use tight clothing, they use long hair, is to get attention. So the one thing your wife is looking for is the one thing you as a man have sworn that you will never give her. Give your wife attention. When she comes back, sit down with her sometimes and just talk for no reason. She's talking to you, put down your phone and look at her. She likes attention. And women are so wonderful. If you invest little in women, women are fertile ground. If you invest little in women, it, they give you great, great harvest. That's why if you give her peace, she will give you powerful peace. If you give her trouble, she will give you big trouble. <laughs> she multiplies everything you give her. Are you here, somebody? So just give her that attention. Those of you that are here, if you are men and you're not here with your, with your wife, after the, when we're doing, we do break, just call your wife for no reason. Attention. That's how to do it. Just call. I'm just checking on you. Nothing. The conference is going well. When she comes back home, don't just be, you are doing what you are doing. She just says, hey, welcome. Please, where, what are we eating? When she comes, stop what you are doing. Go and welcome her. Go and hug her. Sit her down. Say, how was your day? What's happening? If she's in the kitchen, just go and stay with her. Women like attention. And when you give women attention, they will give you enough freedom. They, after you have given them some attention, they say, go and do anything you want to do. You are free for the next three years. <laughs> <laughs> well, that was the crazy wisdom from the Christian church. As usual, it's centered in the Bible. So it's very helpful. In other words, very unhelpful right? Uh, that's what I'm telling you with the Christian church. Always double check, triple check, and quite quadruple check everything you hear from the Christian church, because very often it's vain babbling. It's people that are saying things out of their own mouth, their own opinion, right? Because they reject the Bible and what it's saying, or don't even know it and don't care to know it either. So, so let me uh, get this clear. So I'm going to have to feed my wife's a natural quench for attention to get permission from her to do what I want to do. Wow. So, so is she in charge of the household or, or is the man in charge of the household? So he has to, she, so he has to stoop down to her ego to fulfill what her ego desires so that she can now give him permission to be the head of his household. Wow. That's Christian church logic. Okay, so let me say this. So if my dog would only listen to me if he gets fed, should I keep feeding him until he's dangerously overweight to get a normal dog-like response? Should I keep feeding his ego all the time so that I can get a, a good response? It, 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 you see, it's the leadership of these churches that is the problem. The Bible calls these guys dumb dogs. They can't bark. And they can't see anything, but they give themselves flattering titles, chief apostle, apostle, pastor, and all of this kind of stuff. The Bible says the woman was made for the man and not the other way around. So stop trying to subvert the Bible and, in, and, and include your own false doctrine, which comes from your own mind. Hey YouTube family, I'm going to talk about something that I think is so important for every marriage, but it's a little controversial. As married couples, we should have all of the passwords, all of the logins to every piece of social media that we have, to every computer, every device, and we should be able to check those devices. And the reason I believe this is that I just think that a great marriage is built on trust and honesty, and we need to have what my husband likes to refer to as a secret free guarantee. And the reason we need to have those logins is I think sometimes when we have those secretive places, it's a breeding ground for some really unhealthy behaviors. It can lead us into things like porn. It can lead us into things like affairs. Even if you think it's like harmless flirtation, it becomes something that you never thought it could later on. And so that's why we just need to allow them to check our phone if they feel like they need to, or if they like to get on our computer, whatever it is, we need to be willing to do that. And when we do that, we're going to build their trust. Hey there, we are Dave and Ashley Willis from the Naked Marriage Podcast, and we just want to share with you some answers to your questions. And so our first one we're going to answer is from Kelvin Roy, and it says this, how does a newly married, how do newly married couples create togetherness and oneness in their lives? Right. The first video uh, in that bunch of videos um, is obviously a video for a police officer. I mean, that that is 
someone who's in a marriage who wants to be a police officer, who thinks that he or she can police a marriage, police someone to death. Right. So they want to see every single message, every every single social media comment. They want to see everything. Make sure that you're saying exactly what they want you to say. Now, that is a recipe for disaster, of course. And it's also an ego trip on the woman's side because she wants to feel like she's in complete control. And to be to feel in complete control is to make sure that the man's masculinity is submerged by femininity and by her control and her control is to make sure that she's on top of every single message that you type every single social media comment that you make every single business deal that you do anything that you take and put in your own bank account that you're working hard for to put money in every single activity that you do she wants to police it that's what it seems to me that's her preposition and i don't think uh, you should follow it. Okay, so the first clip was a bit nuts and I completely disagree with it. But let's now deal with the second clip with the actual couple. Right, so uh, and, uh, the question has been asked, has been posed, and these the couple is going to answer the question, right? Now, this is a question that comes up, right? And quite frankly, during couples counselling, um, before you, if you want to get married or during when you're married, you know, you will get people in the church, you know, counselors in the church, you know, which are basically church folks. Right. And they, they would always advise you that you need to be, you're going to be one flesh with this person. Therefore you need to be sharing everything with your spouse, i.e. you as the man, you need to be sharing everything with your wife. It's normally, they normally attack the man. He needs to be sharing everything with her. But when it comes to her, she can decide whether she wants to do it or not. But when it comes to the man, he needs to make sure that everything that makes him ma a male, that gives him masculinity, make sure all of that is subdued by the female, right? So they will always tell you, you need to be sharing your bank account. You need to be sharing your, your passwords for your bank account. Um, you need to be sharing your... Um, your, if you go to the ATM, you need to be sharing that number with your spouse. You need to be sharing your bank account, your business, your home. All of those things as a man, you need to submit to your wife. And really, that is about female empowerment. It's not really about marriage. It's about women's liberation. You know, love, marriage, these things, they take actual work. And that, that word work makes it sound like, oh, this isn't romantic. It should just be so, so natural that we shouldn't have to work at it. But everything in life worth doing takes intentionality. And so I just applaud you for having yes. the wisdom to recognize that this is going to be something that we're going to need to work on. And so my advice would be right from the beginning, be really mindful of the habits that you're starting. Because the habits yes. you're starting in those early years, whether they're good habits or bad habits, is going to be a groove that you settle into, and it's going to be hard to break out of it. So don't fall into the negative habits of, of ignoring each other, of spending all your time together on the same room staring at your own phones and not interacting. Um, but instead, develop healthy habits of saying, we're going we're gonna to talk, we're going we're gonna to walk together, we're going to date each other, we're going we're gonna to communicate. Yeah. And we're going to make sure that everything we do, every part of our life that we can, we're going to share it together. Instead of having his and hers, we're going to have ours in every part of life and just communicate about what that should look like. My question to what he just said is, how much of your life are you going to be giving up to your wife? That's that's my question, because he just said a whole load of things that sound very romantic, very Hollywood, very, very much like a romantic movie. Right. But in reality, that doesn't work because you could spend all your time. You could speak like nobody's business to your wife. You could do all the romantic trips and all the rest of it. And she will still say the same thing. We don't talk. We don't talk. We don't spend time together. We don't talk. And I said, well, well, you, you probably say, well, well, I, I've spent all night talking to you last night. Well, we don't talk, talk. That wasn't real talk. We, we don't talk. That's how these females are, right? <laughs> That's how they are, right? And if you empower these females by giving her all the attention that she craves and all the power that she needs and all you, every single whim, 
you're there going like a lapdog going, <laughs> did I do very well? <laughs> Sweetheart, did I do very well? <laughs> and she go, no, we need to talk. We don't spend time together. And you go, <laughs> what more can we do? What more can I do? <laughs> like a lapdog. <laughs> she will have no respect for you because she expects you to be the head, not a lapdog. Right? If, if, if she wants a man that is always around her all the time and always talking to her and always there for her every whim, she should get a dog because that's what she wants, a dog. She, she wants a dog. She doesn't need a man. She wants a dog, right? Because we as men are men. We are not dogs. We are men, right? We work. We go out there, we work, we earn money. And when we come home, we want our wives to make sure that the house is in order. We want to make sure our wives are, are the pillar of rest when we come home so we can get some peace. We want wives who are understanding. When we've had a hard day at work, we want a wife that is understanding. I've just got home. You know, stop attacking me. I've just got home. Run me a bath. You know, put a meal in front of me. Absolutely. And I love how you said it's ours, not his and hers. And and this, this is a, a huge thing that people often forget. But even when it comes to your finances, I think you can create more togetherness and more unity by sharing your finances. And I know you could say, well, one of us, you know, we, we could go on and on about this. Yeah. And we have lots of videos on this. So definitely check out these videos on YouTube. But, you know, sometimes one of you maybe is better with money than the other. And that's fine if one of you is primarily managing it. But when it comes out of the same pot, you don't tend to kind of, you see it all as, as your money that you're sharing, but ultimately it's all God's and yes. you really communicate about it better because you're seeing what's going in and coming out and you're communicating. And through that, you're having oneness and you've got. Do you hear this woman? Do you hear, do you hear, I've, I've heard her in videos talk this nonsense before and it, it, it aggravated the hell out of me. It's, it's a recipe for a disaster. Don't you ever share your bank account with your wife. So you as a black man, right you already have everything against you right including your your black wife you know who doesn't submit you always have problems with her submitting because she doesn't want to submit and will never ever submit right she's she has women empowerment behind her you ask your wife to do something she doesn't do it right Be and she'll straight up tell you i ain't doing it right or she'll come up with an excuse not to do it because she doesn't want to demean herself, you know, by being under you. But so, 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 so get it. So she wants a man, right, who is going to be her leader, her protector and her head. Right. But she doesn't want headship from that man. The female wants a husband, but she doesn't want headship. She doesn't want leadership. She doesn't want any of that. She doesn't want to submit. So she wants a husband, but she doesn't want to submit. So if your husband asks you, oh, uh, sweetheart, would you mind not wearing that today? Would you mind not wearing that from now on, in fact, because it's showing too much flesh? You know, you shouldn't be showing your cleavage. You shouldn't be showing your breasts. You shouldn't be showing your vagina. You shouldn't be showing your backside because you're married. Right. I want you to cover up, cover those places up and just look a bit more decent. Right. Mother's apparel. The first thing she would go is, you're controlling. You're very, very controlling. Because that constitutes being a controlling person, you see. If you ask your wife to do something, right, that's, con that's considered as being a toxic relationship, especially if she doesn't want to do it. And it could be anything. It could be, can you, can you make me a meal? Can you do this for me? Can you do that for me? If you do too much of that, she would constitute that constitutes a toxic relationship. That's a very abusive relationship. That's how these women are. But yet still, you're supposed to be sharing your bank account. You're supposed to be sharing your house that you work very hard for. You're supposed to be sharing your business that you work very hard for. You're supposed to be adopting her children, which you should never, ever do. Never, ever, ever adopt her children from a previous relationship. That's a recipe for a disaster because the first person to file for a divorce is always going to be the woman. The first person to leave a marriage is always going to be a woman. Always remember that, men. Do not sign your life away. 
to have trust. I mean, probably the biggest part of, of, of having togetherness and oneness and connectedness is trusting one another. And that's going to start through honesty. That's going to being, you know, it's about being honest in every conversation that you have, but being honest in the most loving way possible. Cause that's key. You got to be kind. Yes. You can't be honest and, and, and super critical and mean, you got to be kind, but the more you're honest with each other, the more you're going to feel connected. Okay. Seeing that this woman, uh, seems oh you gotta you gotta be honest you gotta be kind you gotta you gotta feel that connection of oneness that that connection of kindness that oneness that oneness where's all this in the Bible that you notice these two never use any Bible when they're talking their nonsense right you need to be kind you need to show the oneness you need to show oneness you need to show kind that you're connected to your spouse you need to do 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 I'm being very mean. <laughs> I'm being very... <laughs> but this stuff is not a joke. This is not a joke. You're giving advice to people that people are going to take. In these Christian churches, you're giving advice to married couples that they are going to take. And it's a recipe for a disaster. Because all it does, it decreases the authority that the man has in his own home. It's feminism. It's women's liberation. That's all it is, right? All this kindness and all this stuff means that a man now has to listen to your everything that comes out of your mouth. He needs to listen, sit down and listen to it. All of it. That's kindness. You know, a man shouldn't expect his wife to clean the house, to order the house, because that's not kindness, you see. A man shouldn't expect to tell his wife uh, what to wear, you know, in terms of if she's not wearing the right clothes, because that's 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 being unkind. You see, you have to you have to allow her to do whatever she wants, right? A man should have to share everything to do with his his personal money, his his businesses and his money. She he should have to share all of it because you know he, it's a kind thing to do. But is it a biblical thing to do? Anything that subverts your masculinity is not biblical. You are the head of the household and therefore you need to stand strong as the head of the household, not some little boy where she can just have you around her fingers, you know, because when she's busy saying how you're controlling and it's a toxic relationship and it's abusive relationship, she's busy plotting how she's going to screw you in the courts. <laughs> that's what's going that's what's going on in these relationships. Because these marriages are all a waste of time. That's why when you go to the courthouse to get your piece of paper and then you have your white wedding and then you have your honeymoon and your reception and all the rest of it. I'm married. Look, I've done it. Finally done it. And you have all, all, the, all the guests and all that. All that is meaningless to the Most High. Doesn't Most High doesn't give a damn about that stuff. Because he said, who God put together, let no man put asunder. But he never says that a man is supposed to subvert his masculinity. Never ever says, says that. But who he put together, let no man put asunder. But Satan is busy putting people together too. You best believe that. But it's a little controversial. As married couples, we should have all of the passwords, all of the logins to every piece of social media that we have, to every computer, every device, and we should be able to check those devices. And the reason I believe this is that I just think that a great marriage is built on trust and honesty. And we need to have what my husband likes to refer to as a secret free guarantee. Okay, so um, let's do some edification as I would normally do. Now, one thing from these series of clips that I've put up is that the lady that talks about there must be an element of trust, but the simple nature that you have to keep checking your spouse's social media, you have to keep checking up on their phone calls, keep checking up on their messages, keep checking up on their emails, keep checking up on their bank balance, keep checking in their bank account and keep having access to their bank account to check up on them. Um, and keep putting tabs on how much money they're taking out and how much money they're putting in, it means that there's a lack of trust, right? <laughs> so that goes against exactly what she is saying should happen, right? Because if you trust your spouse, you trust them enough to make the, the good decisions, the right decisions, right? So let's now go to Sarah 6 
and we're going to read from 13 to 18. Separate thyself from thy enemies and take heed of thy friends, right? So this talks about um, how to determine your friend and your enemy, right? A faithful, so it, let's go back to 13. Separate thyself from thine enemies and take heed of thy friends. So you, if you have an enemy, you need to separate yourself from that enemy, right? So if you are married to an enemy, you need to separate yourself from that enemy. Any enemy in general, if you're in a business uh, partnership with someone, you need to separate yourself from, from your partner who is your enemy, right? You're supposed to separate yourself from anyone who you perceive as being your enemy. So if you have an enemy in your house, if you're sleeping with the enemy, so to speak, <laughs> you need to separate yourself from your enemy. Let's read it again. Separate thyself from thine enemies and take heed of thy enemies, of thy friends, right? So you're supposed to keep tabs on your friends in the sense that you, you recognize when someone is a friend and when someone is an enemy. When someone means good for you and when someone means bad for you. A faithful friend is a strong defense and he that heart found such a one, heart found a treasure. So if you find a faithful friend, that's the type of friend that you should marry, right? This is when you're proving a friend. So this is the type of, of person that you marry. Nothing do it counter, counter veil a faithful friend and his excellency is invaluable, right? So a faithful friend's excellency is invaluable. If you meet a woman that loves you and wants to take care of you and wants to submit to you, that is a faithful friend, a woman that would that would sit and listen to you and understand her role in terms of uh, how she's supposed to cater for you. That is a faithful friend, right? Someone that understands that the woman was made for the man, right? She was made for her husband, right? And not the husband was made for for her, so she understands that her role is being a helpmeet, a pillar of rest, and to be submissive to her man. A faithful friend is a medicine of life, and they that fear the Lord shall find him. So you have to fear the Lord to find a faithful friend. You have to fear the Lord. You have to have the fear of the Lord in you, right, to find a faithful friend. Whoso fear at the Lord shall direct his friendship aright, but he is, so shall his neighbour be also. Let's read that bit again. Whoso fair at the Lord shall direct his friendship aright, but as he is, so shall his neighbour be also. So light will draw like, right? So if you fear the Lord, you will draw someone who, will, who fares the Lord, right? 18. My son, gather instruction from thy youth up, so shall thou find wisdom till thine old age. So you gather your wisdom from your youth up right you, and you stay close to the lord you fear the lord so that the lord can direct your pathway right let's now go to proverbs we're going to go to proverbs 3 and we're going to read from 5 to 7 because trust came up in these series of clips right and the lack of trust thereof so let's hear what the bible has to say about trust Proverbs 3, reading from 5 to 7. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not unto thine own understanding. So when it comes to the scriptures, you trust in the Lord. You don't lean on your own understanding, right? But, but trust in the Lord is a, general, is a general term. You always trust in the Lord, right? Let's carry on. In all thy ways acknowledge him and he shall di direct thy paths. Right. So when you trust in the Lord, he will direct your pathway. Right. Let's carry on. Be not wise in thine own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. Right. So trust in the Lord. Right. When you trust in the Lord and you lean not onto your own understanding, it means that you use the Bible. Right. In everything, you use the Bible as an instruction, as an instruction manual of how to conduct your life. Right. And it says, in all ways, acknowledge him and he shall direct thy paths. So if your husband is committing an affair, the spirit will show you that he's committing an affair, you know, and you're within your rights to say, oh, you've been speaking to the same person for twice in a row, for two days in a row or all week. You've been speaking to the same person. Who is that person? You're within your rights to do that. Right. If you if your husband all of a sudden starts messaging someone 
and he doesn't normally message. He doesn't message at all. Least of all you, <laughs> right? You're within your rights to say, who are you messaging? You've been messaging quite a lot. Who, who are they? Right? So the Lord will direct the pathway. If your husband is doing something stupid, the spirit will hit you up and say your husband is getting up to no good. Right? <laughs> but what you don't do is say, well, OK, I need all of your social media. I need all of your bank details. I need all of your message access to your emails. Or that's that's not how you have trust in a marriage. Right. It brings distrust. Right. Dishonor in a marriage. Be not wise in thine own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. If you are wise in your own eyes, you think that you know everything. <laughs> right. <laughs> Be not wise in your own eyes. You're supposed to be not wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord. You're supposed to fear the Lord and depart from evil. Stop doing evil yourself. Right. If you think your spouse is doing evil, you stop doing evil yourself. So the Lord can hit you up and say your spouse is doing evil. You know, be submissive. Be a submissive wife. Right. Honor your husband. Right. So, so, so the Lord can direct your pathways. Right. Let's go to Luke 12. Let's go to Luke 12, reading from 1 to 4. In the meantime, when there were gatherers together, an innumerable multitude of people, insomuch that they trod one upon another, he began to say unto his disciples, First of all, be, be aware, ye, of the leaven of the Pharisees, which is hypocrisy. So Christ was saying, be aware of the Pharisees because they are some hypocrites. You know, they are a bunch of hypocrites. So be very aware of these evildoers called the Pharisees. For there is nothing covered that shall not be revealed, neither head that shall not be known. Therefore, whatsoever ye have spoken in darkness shall be heard in the light, and that which ye have spoken in, in the air in closets shall be proclaimed upon the, the housetop. So what it's saying is that if you do wickedness, Right. And you think you're not going to be found out. You will be found out eventually. And it's saying that it will be found out and everybody's going to get a chance to know. Lots of people get a chance to know that you're the devil that the Bible speaks of. Let's read it again. For there is nothing covered that shall not be revealed, neither hid that shall not be known. Therefore, whatsoever ye have spoken in darkness, you say some wickedness in darkness, you've done some wickedness in darkness, shall be heard in the light. And that which ye have spoken in the air, in closet, shall be proclaimed upon the housetops. It means everybody's going to get a chance to know it. For, and I say unto you, my friends, be not afraid of them that kill the body, and after that have no more that they can do. Right. So these evil people that want to destroy your life, that want to commit adulteries, fornications, want to abuse you. Those females that want to put pressure on you to submerge, to to subvert your masculinity and, and bring you down to 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 being a female <laughs> because they believe in all this 50 50 marriage and all this gender equality, because that's really what what that's about. Feminism. That's really what it's about. All those wicked females. The Lord will, will, have, will not have mercy upon these females. Let's read for again. And I say unto you, my friends, be not be afraid of them that kill the body. So they might kill the body. Hey, these Pharisees might bring you up, you know, and they might put you, they might behead you. They might try to execute you. But after that, they can't, when they've finished killing you, they can't kill your spirit. But I say unto you, my friends, be not afraid of them that kill the body and after that have no more that they can do. They can't kill your spirit. Right. So they may kill you. You know, I'm, I'm, obviously it's in extreme circumstances because he was because Christ was talking about the Pharisees, but they can't kill your spirit. Right. Let's now go to Sira. Let's go to Sira 26, reading from 22 to 26. A an harlot shall be counted a spittle, but a married woman is a tower against death to her husband. So a harlot, <laughs> a woman that's a harlot, she dresses like a harlot, because if you dress like a harlot, you are a harlot, right? If you wear the attire of a harlot, you are a harlot. A harlot is a prostitute. Right. A woman that dresses sexually explicit because she's selling sex. Right. A harlot shall be accounted a spittle in the most high's eyes. A harlot is is just trash a nothing. But a married woman is a tower against death to her husband. A married woman, a gift from God himself. 
a woman that the Lord has blessed you from him, from his own hands, has blessed you with a woman, has made a woman just the right measurements for you. She is a gift from the Lord. And it says, a harlot shall be accounted a spittle, but a married woman is a tower against death to her husband. You, that's a faithful friend. That's a friend that you need to have. A woman that trusts you. Put her trust in you. She doesn't need to check your social media. She doesn't need to check your comments online. <laughs> and vice versa. As a husband, you don't need to check your wife's comments and your wife's emails and check up in your wife's bank account. You know, <laughs> you don't need to be doing all of that because you trust in your wife. And if there's wickedness going on, the Lord will bring it to light. Right? A wicked woman is given as portion to a wicked man, but a godly woman is given to him that feareth the Lord. So if you're wicked, you'll get a wicked woman. Simple as that. But if you fear the Lord, he will bring a good woman to you. Right? 23. Uh, yeah, a wicked woman is given a portion to a wicked man, but a godly woman is given to him that fareth the Lord. A dishonest woman contemneth shame, but an honest woman would reverence her husband. That's a very significant verse, because if you're a dishonest woman, right? You're on your social media, you're flirting with men online, sending messages, text messages to other men going, oh, my husband's not going to be around this weekend. Do you want to come over? You know, that kind of stuff. You know, it says a dishonest woman contemnet shame, a woman that lies all the time, t t says dangerous lies to destroy the life of your husband, s goes around lying about your husband. You can't be discreet about anything going around lying and causing destruction. It says a dishonest woman contemplates shame, but a honest woman would reverence her husband. If you're a truly honest woman, you would respect your husband. And a woman that respects and reverence just means respect. A woman that respects her husband is a woman that understands that she is under the authority of her husband. And so she is supposed to be submissive to his leadership. That's a woman that reverence her husband. And that means that she's going to be honest. A woman that does that is an honest woman because she trusts in the Lord. She trusts in her husband and in trusting her in her husband, she trusts in the Lord. And she trusts that if he's doing anything wicked, the Lord will bring it into the light. Let's read it again. A dishonest woman contemplates shame, but a dishonest woman contemplates shame. So that's a shameful woman. And an honest woman would reverence her husband. So a woman that respects her husband, understands her husband and respects her husband is a woman that, that reverence her husband. 25. A shameless woman shall be counted as a dog, but she that is shamefaced it will fear the Lord. A dog is an evil doer in the Bible, right? So that's a B-I-T-C-H, right? A shameless woman, a woman that disrespects her husband, a harlot, as someone that lies and cheats and commits adulterous affairs in her heart, dreaming and lusting after other men, messaging other men, flirting online with other men. While, meanwhile, she's married to a husband and living in her husband's house and having her husband's children. Meanwhile, she's flirting with other men. That's a shameless woman. That's a dog. That's a harlot. That's a prostitute. That's a no good woman. That's a wicked woman. Shameless woman shall be counted as a dog. A dog is an evil doer. But she that is shamefaced will fear the Lord. But if you if you fear the Lord, you're not going to want to do those things. You're not going to want to be dishonest. You're not going to go online and flirt with other men. If you're a man, you're not going to want to go online and flirt with other women because you, you love your wife. And if you respect your husband and his authority and under his authority, you, you're definitely not going to go out there and, and flirt with other men. Meanwhile, living under the roof of your husband, right? 26. A woman that honoreth her husband shall be judged wise of all, but she that dishonoreth him in her pride shall be counted ungodly of all. Let's read 26 again. A woman that honoreth her husband shall be judged wise of all. If you honor your husband, you appreciate your husband and what your husband, what the Lord has blessed you with. A good head, a man that fears the Lord. He may not be everything that where he should be, but he loves the Lord. He fears the Lord. He has a good heart towards the Lord. And with your help, your support, he will grow and grow and grow. Right? 
<laughs> because that's another thing as a side thing uh, in these series of clips what i'm hearing is you spend all of you should spend all of your time with your wife you know your every waking moment should be about being with your wife and being at one with your wife but that's not really you see when you Yes, you should spend lots of time with your wife. Yes, you, sh you shouldn't be on the phone when you're having, say, a date night with your wife. You shouldn't be on the phone, right? That's wrong, right? You should spend quality time with your spouse. And a man should spend quality time with his wife. But when it's to an extreme level, where it's a detrimental level, where a man is always with his wife and his wife dictates what he does, right? So if he's not spending time with her, then it's a problem. That means... He's not studying his Bible as much. That means he's not spending quality time with the Lord as much. You know, a man needs to spend hours with the Lord daily, studying his Bible, praying, seeing what the Lord is saying. He needs to spend quality time with the Lord. He needs a man who the Lord has instructed to teach the people. He needs to spend extra time in his Bible studying it to make sure whatever he's saying is above board. Right. If he's supposed to be going on the street, the Lord has put given him the instructions to go on the street. He needs to know what his Bible is saying so he can edify the people. All that takes time. And a woman doesn't always understand that. So when you say things like, oh, his whole life should be about being with his wife, that's to a detrimental level. That's not biblical, right? Let's read 26 again. A woman that honoreth her husband shall be judged wise of all, but she that dishonoreth him in her pride shall be counted ungodly of all. So if you dishonor your husband in your pride, your husband is working hard. He's providing for his family. He's providing, he's paying the bills. He's taking care of the children. He's buying the food for the family. He's making sure the children or the child is well fed, making sure the child has a, has a father and, 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 and the child doesn't want for anything, making sure his wife is provided for. And you still bring shame to your husband. You still uh, nag your husband to death. You still proclaim, oh, you don't spend time with me. You you don't spend time with me. You still want to do that, even though you know the man is a man of the Lord and he is a teacher of the Lord's word. <laughs> the Lord will, will count you as being ungodly of all. Right. Because if you keep wanting to get in the way, the Lord will move you out of the way. If you keep wanting to block the entrance and cause problems to your to your husband, he will unblock that entrance because <laughs> the Lord competes with no man. <laughs> the Lord competes with no man. The Lord complete competes with no man. And uh, the only police on this earth is the Lord. And the Lord has his lesion, lesions of angels that do his work for him. Christ is our king and our mediator. But the ultimate police is the Lord, the most high himself. Brothers and sisters, I hope you were edified. Shalom.